In this video, we're going to take a look at using the cost update function in X3. What the cost update function does is it allows you to update costs for stock issues. For example, you uh, create a work order for a product and it has a cost to it. And let's say one of the components you used comes in with an invoice higher than your original PO amount. So let's say your invoice is for $10. You receive it, you consume it in a work order, you complete, you close, you cost the work order, everything's said and done, and then you have a cost on that finished good that has now consumed that component. So let's say it's one component and uh, that goes into the work order. So if it's $10 and you make one, the cost is $10 if there's no labor. Then your uh, purchase invoice for that component that you received in at $10 comes in at $20. Um, the cost update function allows you to, after the fact, update the cost of that raw material and of the finished good. So I will show you the setup and how that works. So we'll take a look at the products first of all. So I have a couple of test products set up, test parent and test child. And I'll create a created a bomb for the parent that uses just quantity one of the child. So I will go in and take a look. Here's my test parent. Now I created the uh, product records, but the setup we need to look at is in the product site information. So the costing method for this to um, be valid to use has to be average cost. Um, Average lot cost, FIFO, anything but standard or revised standard. Okay, it's got to use an actual costing basis, or else there's, if you're using standard costs, there's no point in updating the actuals because you're using standard. So average, average cost is typically what you would use. And um, other than that, that's all you need to do on that setup. Um, then within the costing method, there's also another critical setting you have to turn on and that's adjust issues costs. This allows this costing method to, to be eligible to run the cost update function. So I've got my two products, the um, test parent, test child. All right, I've created a bomb. The bomb is test parent and it just uses quantity one of test child. And I just used a dummy routing that's irrelevant here with, with no cost on the um, any routing labor or anything. So the next step is to um, create a purchase order. So I create a purchase order for that test child product. So here is my test order. So I created a purchase order for a quantity of 100 of this product at $10 each. So that's $1,000 total. Okay, so next, um, if I look at the status of this, I can hop to the receipt, the receipt 31. You see that I received the product in without any variation in cost. So the receipt came in um, the same gross price ten dollars you see here you see all the costs ten ten dollars times a hundred is a thousand <clears throat> now you see here the purchase cost total is um, two thousand dollars so I've already on this product um, I received the invoice in um, at uh, at twenty dollars instead of ten. Then I, then in addition to that, I received an additional invoice for another ten dollars per unit, called a complimentary invoice. So this is complimentary invoices are a way to just add more and more cost onto an item. So that's what I'm going to do again here. So the basics right now, all we have to follow is <clears throat> order for ten dollars, received in at ten dollars, completed a work order received the actual invoice at 20 
and then I ran the cost update function and then whip posting. So the, the steps in the process, once you receive additional costs, is to run the cost update function. Now I've, I've got it in my favorites here, but you would find this under stock, periodic processing cost adjustment. So this is something you would run as a recurring task on a daily basis. And um, you can select you know, what type of products you want to run the update for. Now if you don't run this update, then nothing happens in the journal or um, <clears throat> in subsequent valuations. Um, if the stock is still in the building, X3 automatically <clears throat> updates the costs. But if the stock has left the building, this is where this cost adjustment, it'll make the adjustments to everything. So I have a, uh, a work order that I did for the product. I'm gonna pull up and show. Uh, let's see here. Let me just switch my roll. All right, so my work order I have here is for a test parent, and it consumes quantity one of the test child. If I look at my production cost inquiry, <clears throat> currently I'm at $30. So what happened here is I received my initial um, part in at $10, completed the work order, quantity one. One component at $10, the finished product comes out at $10. Then, um, I received the actual purchase invoice for $20 that revised the cost to $20 for the part, ran the cost update function that changed my work order cost to 20. Then I received a complimentary invoice uh, for um, another $10, ran the cost update function that took my, um, my production cost up to $30. So what I'm going to do again is do another um, purchase invo complimentary invoice on that product, and I'm going to raise this cost to $40 now for the production cost. And you see this work order status, it is closed. And this work order is closed and costed. See here on the status here, closed and costed, which means there's nothing else you can do to this thing, but yet we're able to update the cost. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go and create a new purchase invoice. And I'm gonna create a complimentary invoice. Complimentary invoices are just just that. They um, I'm just going to backdate it for that original order date. It shouldn't be necessary, but I'm just going to do it from my supplier. And then I have to go down here and um, get a bogus supplier number. So I'm going to select my order number, which happens to be here. My line number of the product. And there's my product and I'm going to add another thousand dollars I create that and now before I can post it I can um, I need to put the invoice in my total standard Okay, so everything's good now. Another invoice for $1,000 came in for my original order. I'm gonna post it. Okay, now that I post it, I'm gonna run that high cost update adjustment function. And I'm just gonna run it on everything. I'm not sure that simulate will actually, this doesn't seem to ever produce an actual log. So I'm going to run the cost adjustment for real, not in simulation mode. Make sure 
actually, let me hop out of this function first and run the cost adjustment. Now, if I hop back into my work order, which was just costed at $30. Okay, so here's my here's my work order. Test parent closed and costed, same one as before. Now, if I hop to my production cost inquiry, now my cost is $40. In the journal entry, what that looks like for this, you have to go into uh, with posting. That usually runs automatically and it's a recurring task. So I'm going to manually run that. Quit posting. And you'll see it will create a new all sites, all transactions. And I get a journal number. This is going to be for my extra ten dollars. Take a second for the journal to come up. There's my journal, and you see here's all of my entries. So you see the ten dollars it's adding. It's taking the thirty out, putting forty back in. And that's how the cost update function works in Sage X3. Now one other important thing, if your period is closed and you run the cost update function, it still wants to update the costs. So according to the Sage documentation, I haven't tried this in the simulation yet. Um, you will there will either be a log or a message that comes up when you run that cost update if it's trying to update costs in a closed period so you would then um, go back and reopen the period and then rerun the cost update function and that would update costs so um, that's how all of that works and um, if you have any questions let me know